The Bayton, as you know, is known for a lot of things. The airplane, the cash register, and the pop-top can, to name just a few. But did you know we just might be the next boomtown? No kidding. There's a lot of excitement about drilling in rocks just like these for oil and natural gas. There is big money to be made, but also big risk. So we looked into the growing debate and asked, can we make a killing without polluting the earth? There's nothing wimpy about the new menu at this downtown Dayton restaurant. Olive serves up hearty Greek and Tuscan fare. Organic, free-range, homegrown ingredients from 57 local farms right to your fork. And that's not all that's cooking here. On Fridays, owner Kim Collette puts out this green bucket in this sign. No diner has to donate. Regardless, Collette gives 5% of sales to fight fracking. We really wanted to say, hey, there's a better way for Ohio to make money. It's a hot topic among olive suppliers who make their living off the land. They worry underground drilling for natural gas and oil in the Dayton region could pollute the water and harm the animals and humans who drink it. We call ourselves the heart of it all, and we have an enormous resource in this water, and why would we dare to mess with that? To understand the concern, you have to understand the process. This animation from the Ohio Energy Resource Alliance illustrates the newest fracking technique. Crews pierce the ground with a hydraulic bit that runs through groundwater, which is 200 to 300 feet underground, to reach shale formations that are six to 8,000 feet underground. Then they angle the equipment to make a horizontal tunnel through the shale. Once the hole is made and lined repeatedly with cement and steel casings that act as a buffer, crews pump water, sand, and chemicals into the fractured shale to extract pockets of natural gas and oil. The entire Dayton region sits on a giant deposit of Utica shale. The biggest concern that we hear over and over again, which I think is, is the least concern, is groundwater contamination going to hurt your family, your children because of fracking. It ain't going to happen. Terry Fleming is the executive director of the Ohio Petroleum Council. For months, he's been trying to convince people oil and natural gas mining is both safe and incredibly profitable. Fleming believes Ohio would be foolish to let what he calls environmental mistruths get in the way of this new half-billion-dollar gold rush. That's a game changer. That's the biggest industrial development that this state has ever seen. If that's there, we think is there. Uh, there have been studies that indicated that by 2015 you could have an additional 200,000 jobs just in the oil and gas industry. Even a good lease can't protect someone's health. State Representative Roland Winburn, a Democrat from the 40th District, spoke out against fracking at a January State House protest. Winburn represents Harrison Township, Trotwood, and Huber Heights. Energy companies are already exploring those areas, looking for any lucrative deposits of oil and natural gas. Winbird says disasters like those in the Gulf of Mexico and Alaska and the brownfield legacy of companies like Bayer show there's no guarantee energy interests won't endanger the giant aquifer under Montgomery County. So if we're talking about trying to make Ohio a business-friendly area, and we have a problem with our drinking water and other kind of contaminants, I'm sure that there's a number of companies who may not want to come to Ohio because of that. While the state geologist said he believes safeguards will be in place to protect drinking water from fraccidents, Fleming admits it's hard to overcome public skepticism. People just don't like oil companies. I'm under no illusion there. We are probably one of the most disliked industries in the world. And that's all because of that high-rise sign you see at the corner gas station uh, and the prices there. And there's another water watchdog in this equation. Like Winburn and Collette, some church leaders worry Ohio is too eager to capitalize on a huge new revenue stream. We don't know the answers to some fairly significant questions. What are the long-term outcomes and effects of this? And how might it affect the land and the water, not just you know, in 10 years, but 100 years from now? Reverend Jack Kepke speaks for the Episcopalian Diocese in Southern Ohio. It includes the Dayton region, as well as Southeast Ohio and Pennsylvania, where energy mining is already prevalent. Kepke's environmental science expert told us there's also evidence that careless drillers detonating explosives in the ancient shale can trigger earthquakes. When you come in and disturb it and abuse it in that way, that uh, you may create smaller fault, fault lines in the process. Fleming denies that claim. He sees it this way. Let's talk about one of the greatest environmental concerns in this country. Unemployment, despair, hopelessness, uh, just a pattern of, of abuse, uh, drugs, alcohol, because people have lost all hope of ever getting a job. 
and back at Olive, that is food for thought. But Kim Collette believes this debate boils down to what she calls a fundamental law of man. You ruined our water. You ruined all of us.